Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I'm not new to this church. Okay. Okay, dear brother and sister, okay, are you all well in spirit? I don't see much smile. <laughs> okay, I pray whatever we are going through, okay, let not our spirit quench the Lord. Let our spirit always be the light that Lord, the Lord will be pleased with. Okay. So I'm glad that I think we choose to stay and listen to the words of God, even though we can choose to do other things. Okay, so how blessed are we? So I believe you have brought your cell group book. Yeah, I see a lot of not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so today what I'm going to share is based on the cell group book. Okay, that uh, the title is God Who is Greater Than All. Okay, let my assistant assist first. Okay, thank you. Okay, in our life, okay, who is greater or what thing is greater? Have we asked ourselves? Okay, most of the time when we face situation, okay, we will always think of what comes into our mind and that would be the greater, right? But in the Bible, it says, God who is creator of all, he is the great thing. I mean, he is the great who created all things. Okay. So, God who is greater than all. Can we phantom this sentence that God is the creator of everything? Right. So, the creator of all things. Okay. In Psalms, chapter 103, verse 19, it says, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Right. So, the creator of all things, all, that means all objects, all things, and everything in the universe. Okay. And rule, that is to take responsibility for something and handle it. So, when someone has established something, okay, or has planned something, okay, he or she need to take full responsibility. Okay, and rule over it, right? So our God, He created all things and He will take responsibility for all things. That includes us. Okay, we are the creator. We are the creation of His, right? And ruler of all, God is the creator and sovereign, the only absolute being who rules over all creation. So other than God, no one is supposed to rule over anything. And He is the one that is supposed to rule all things and we are to look upon him okay, as a creator of all. Okay. Okay, we all know what is the universe, right? Have you all seen the universe? Yeah, we seen it in Google, right? In the picture. Okay. But actually, when we want to see the universe, it's not easy. But I believe, or we believe we will see the universe when we transfigure. Amen. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15, they say, Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastland like fine dust. So the size, extent, and scale of the earth, the sun, and the stars in the universe are so enormous that it is difficult to understand them with the current state of human thoughts and science. Right? So whatever we see information and hear about the solar system, all these are just the surface. But deep into it, does anyone know what is happening? No. Okay? So only God knows because He created all things. Right? So, the distance between the star okay, show how vast the universe is we all should. I mean, with this information, we can find out on the internet and we know that okay, it's light years apart. Right? Okay, God who upholds all, okay, God who governs the huge galaxy, okay, the grand symphony of the stars in the universe, the perfect order and harmony of the universe. So everything that God has created, He has put in place. He has put everything in order. Nothing is out of His order. Okay, everything is according to what He has planned and what He has to do. 
So, in our life, whatever, where we are, and how we are, He has put us into His plan, into His purpose. Okay? So in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3, okay, he says, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And He upholds the universe by the word of His power. After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Okay, who is this referring to? Yes, thank you. Okay, so... Okay, the Earth rotates and orbits at incredible speeds in space. Do we all know that? Do we all know that? Yeah. Okay. But because God has made it so invisible to us that we do not feel even it's rotating, right? If you are able to feel it, I don't think we can sit down here and look at each other. Okay. So this is the result of how God upholds all things by the word of His power and preserves His creation. Okay. In Job chapter 38, verse 7, okay, it says, When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, so the tremendous sound that the planet makes as it rotates as part of the larger universe can be said to be a symphony of billions and instruments of the great sovereign God. Okay. Okay, in Psalm chapter 136, chapter, verse 5, it says, To him who by understanding make the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. So the vast universe is created in a perfect and intricate design. It is the testimony of the ongoing manifestation of God's mercy to redeem the world as each component is precisely arranged according to God's plan. Okay. So the greater of all, okay, I think His love is the greater of all. right? So His unconditional love God's agape love. Okay? He so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay? So, the greater God, I think His love is the greatest of all that He has given to us. Okay? Alright, can anyone guess who is this? Daniel? Yes. That means you have been reading the Bible. Very good. Okay, what happened to Daniel? <laughs> what happened to Daniel? Yeah. So when he was cast into the lion's den for disobeying the order, right, or praying, he was thrown in the lion's den. So during this time, is the lion's den greater than him? I mean, the front that he sees, is the lion's den greater or God is greater? Yeah, God is greater, right? But if I were him in this situation, I don't know where I'd be able to say that. <laughs> okay. So, you see the situation in front of him and he still can see God is the most greater of all. Okay? And who is this? Who? Yes, very good, David. Very good. You have been reading the Bible so much. Okay, so in First Samuel chapter 17 and 18, it talks about David's life. In chapter 17, it was his victory life, right? He defeated who? Yes, Goliath. He did not see Goliath as the greater of all. Okay, he see God as the greater of all. After his victory, what happened to him? Yes, he was chased by King Saul for how many? Ten years. Okay. But yet he did not give up. Okay, he still continued okay, in his faith in God. Right? So David, King David did not see the situation in his life as greater than God. Okay. And who is this? Last week just passed. Who? Yes, it's Abraham. Okay? So we all know Abraham's life. 
his four main parts in his life is the first part is leave his country and relative. That is Genesis chapter 12. The second part of his life is leaving his nephew Lord in Genesis chapter 13. The third part of his life is leaving, asking Haggai and Ishmael to leave. Right? In Genesis chapter 21. And the last part is the difficult one. That is Isaac. Right? It's not leave, it's kill. Right? So you see, Abraham in his four part of his life, he did not see all this as the creator of everything. Yet he see God as a creator of all, covering all, upholding all things. Okay? And who is this? <laughs> Elijah. Very good. Thank you, Elder Steve. I think, believe you were reading the Bible for 10 chapters a day. <laughs> okay. So, Elijah, what happened here? Okay, he was gaining victory from the prophets of Baal, correct? And one against how many? Well, you see, I'm testing you all the Bible. <laughs> okay, it's one against 450 Baal, correct? One against 450 person. Okay, so imagine you are against 450 person. Will you be able to feel victory? I don't think so. I will feel I got to run away now. <laughs> All right. So you see, Elijah, Prophet Elijah, did not see the Prophet of about 450% of them as greater than all. He see God as greater, that he will gain victory through God. Right. Okay. But after he gained victory in chapter 18, what happened to him in chapter 19? Seems like David, right? He was chased by who? Jezebel. Correct. And he ran away. And at that time, he feel he has lost everything. Right. And he want to die. But yet, God strengthened him and he regained his faith and see God as a greater of all. Right. Oh, this is a bit scary. Who is this? Okay. I, I don't search for those funny, funny, cute pictures, but I search for a scary picture that Jonah is eaten by the scary fish. <laughs> okay, so if you see this fish in front of you, will you be scared? I will be scared too. <laughs> right? Being eaten by such an ugly and scary fish. <laughs> so, what happened to Jonah? Disobey God, correct? He disobey God and he see his own zeal. Okay. Greater than God. Because why? The Nineveh people is so evil, so sinful, that when God asked him to go and save them, to preach to them, he did not want to go. So at that time, he see that as greater thing than God. But after he was eaten by this monster fish, he repented for three days in his stomach. Okay? And he started to see the bigger picture, what God has asked him to do. And then at that time, he see and feel and think that other than that, nothing is greater than God. Okay? Okay, this one, last one. What is this picture about? Yes, the man standing, holding the man sitting down, the man is Jesus. So what is this incident? Anyone remember the pool of Pushida? What happened? Mm. Mm. Please don't disappoint me. Tell me something. <laughs> yes. Healing. Okay. Of the important man. Okay. So in John chapter 5. Okay. In John chapter 5. Until... Not the whole, uh, whole verse, uh, until chapter 15 to 16. Okay. If you read throughout, okay, 
this man was at the pool of Bushida for how many years? Yes, 38 years. And 38 years, he can't even get himself healed in the pool. How ironic, correct? And one thing we need to take note, or we need to understand correctly, this important man is not disabled. Okay? He can move, he can walk, but it's that he cannot move as fast as other people. Okay? So whenever the pool starts to stir by the angel, okay, whoever gets into the pool first will be healed. So when he was making his way to the pool, someone jumping before him. That is why he cannot always get healed for 38 years. And one day, Jesus came to the pool of Bersida and walked toward this man. Right? So if you look in the Bible, okay, when Jesus came to him, what did Jesus say to him? Do you want some ice cream? <laughs> no. Do you want to get well? Correct. So when someone is coming to you and asking you for the first time, do you want to get well? What should you say? Yes. But this man, what did he reply? He did not reply yes. He grumbled straight away. No, dear sir, when I want to get down this, you know, all the... Then he's grumbling. Then, what did Jesus say next to him? Get up and walk. Alright. And immediately he get up and walk. Right. So this 38 years, what does it remind you of another incident? Remember book two? The wilderness journey? Yes. What happened to the Israelite? Yes. Why are they sentenced to the 40 years journey? So, okay, if you look at the wilderness journey, let me see. Okay, you can see, right? Okay, from the start, when they went down all the way until they reached Ritma in the center, which is also Kadesh. Okay, they are side by side. Okay, from there, what did they do? Yes. They send spies because when God asked them to go and conquer the land of Canaan, they don't want. They want to send spies to look into the land, what is in the land. Then they want to go. So because of their unbelief, they were sentenced to 38 years in the wilderness journey. Okay? So, for this man, 38 years, he was at the pool of Bushida. What does this mean? What does it signify? His unbelief. You see, he said he got to get into the pool to get healed. But what did Jesus do to him? Get up and walk. He straight away walk. He don't need to get into the pool and heal. Right. So you see, for 38 years of his unbelief, that was his sin. He did not believe in God. But at that time, he did not know this man was Jesus. But at that time, he just believed what this man is telling him to do. Okay? And after that, when he was healed, what happened? The Pharisees, the Dazi asked him, who healed you on the Sabbath day? Right? It's very unlawful, right? So he told the Pharisees and Sadasi, it's a man, no, I don't know what his name, get okay, I heal him. Okay? But, after that, he met Jesus in the temple. Then he know and come to realize this man is Jesus. And what did Jesus tell him? One thing, sin no more. Okay? You are made whole again, so sin no more. So you see, for 38 years, the unbelief of his sin, that means the unbelief in God, is so much greater than what he sees around him. Okay? Okay, let me give you an example. It may not be real, but this one, see whether you all know who the blame is. Okay, one day there was a man 
riding his motorbike on the street. And the street speed limit is 70. So this man was riding around 60, 60 plus. Okay. As he was riding, in front there stand the traffic police. And then when he rides past the traffic police, the traffic police start to take photo of him. And he was very curious and he feel very injustice. Why? So this man go to the front of the traffic light, he made a U-turn and go back to the same street again. This time around, he ride even slower at 50. When he ride past the traffic policeman, the traffic policeman still take photo of him. Then he would just go and feeling, oh, cannot be. Uh, I will bring the law. Uh. This time around, the third time, he U-turn, go to the same street again, pass by the traffic police. He ride even slower. I think he's pushing his bike already. Yet the traffic policeman take photo of him. Then he said, okay, I, mean, I think this crazy traffic policeman, I think you know nothing to do. Uh. Okay. So he just ride off. Two weeks later, he get a letter from the traffic police department. And what does he say? You all know? He was fined $400 and 12 demerit point for doing what? No. Riding without helmet. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to say, who does this man look at? His own problem or the traffic police? <laughs> so in the end, it's his own problem. His own thing is greater. <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway, it's just a joke. Okay, so to sum it all, okay, the Almighty God demonstrates His agape love to save all mankind by sending His only Son to this earth. God is the creator of all things. We all know God upholds everything. He can do all things. But because of His unconditional love for us, lowly mankind, He gave up His only precious thing, Jesus Christ, to be sent upon this earth to die for our sin on the cross by His precious blood. So our salvation is the result of the love of our God who is greater than all. So to sum it up, in John chapter 3, verse 16, this is the verse that God, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Okay, so let's pray that whatever things we are facing, that thing is not greater than our God. Amen. As long as we stay truthful, faithful, and we do not stray away from His Word, God will always help us out of our situation. He has the way. He has planned it all for us. We just need to listen and do it. Okay, amen. Okay, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy and your words that you have given us. We pray, Father, that you are the greater of all that help us to see that you uphold all things and you govern all things. Let not our life be a life that we control by ourselves, that we manage ourselves, but let our life be you who is controlling, be you who is managing it, and that you will direct us to walk the ways that you want us to walk so that your kingdom will be established through us in this life for us. Father, we also pray for our children, for all the ministry and the church, that you will bless all and govern all, that all things, everything, everyone will come as one in Jesus Christ for the work of yours. We thank you so much, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Okay, glory to God. Thank you.